So Hourglass launched their new Vanish Airbrush Primer. I was a little bit confused about this because it seems to be targeted towards the same people who loved the Veil Mineral Primer. I am one of those people. This has been a holy grail primer for me for a long time. I have the big jumbo size. And when I was looking at the description of the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer, I couldn't figure out how they would possibly be different from one another. So I decided to order it so I could test it out and compare these two Hourglass primers and see how they're different. So if you have also been wondering how the new Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer is different from the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer, I'm hoping I can clear that up a little bit for you today. If you already have the Veil Primer, do you need the Vanish Primer? We'll talk about that. Welcome back. Welcome if you're new. Let's go ahead and get into comparing these two Hourglass primers. So that I could show you these on my face today, I'll be applying the Vanish Airbrush Primer on this side of my face and the Veil Mineral Primer on this side of my face. I switched hands for the demo purposes so there wouldn't be any confusion. Now I have years of experience with the Veil Mineral Primer. I've gone through bottles and bottles and tubes of this and I've been testing this out pretty extensively as well so that I could compare these. So before I get to the similarities and differences, let's talk about the prices and sizes available. Both both primers are available in this 30 ml size for $56. Comes in this frosted glass pump bottle and the difference is basically this color right here that you'll find on both. Other than that, the bottles are exactly the same. Currently, this is the only size available in the Vanish Airbrush Primer. The Hourglass Veil Primer also comes in two other sizes. You can get a travel 8.95 ml size for $22 as well as this jumbo 60 ml tube for $72. Both of these hourglass primers are vegan and cruelty free and they have a lot of the same claims which is why I think there's some confusion. They both claim to smooth skin texture and give an airbrushed soft focus effect to the skin while minimizing the look of fine lines, pores, and wrinkles and they claim to enhance the application and look of your makeup while extending the wear and remaining lightweight. You only need a pea size amount of each of these for your entire face. That's one reason why I feel like these are so weightless. Another reason is that you massage these into the skin like a lotion, as opposed to a lot of primers where you kind of press them into the skin. You almost apply these like skincare so that they mesh with your skin. All right, let's get into some differences between the two primers. Even though they're both white, there is some difference in the finish and the texture of these primers. The Veil Primer has a milky cloud cloud-like, kind of whipped, airy texture, while the Vanish is this kind of translucent gel-like lotion. So that milky texture of the Veil Primer is designed to conceal redness and rosacea and even skin tone, whereas within that translucent texture of the Vanish Primer, there's microspherical powders that are designed to absorb excess oil for shine control, but without leaving your skin looking flat. Your skin will still have a multi-dimensional look, whereas there's no claims whatsoever with the Veil Primer regarding shine control, oil control, or mattifying. The Veil Primer is called a mineral primer because it has titanium dioxide and zinc in it to give it SPF 15, which if you follow me, you know how I feel about that. Such minimal amount of sunscreen when you're applying a pea size amount of primer really makes no difference whatsoever, but it's in there and it's just fine for sensitive skin. Both of these are. I forgot to say this in the beginning, but neither of these have fragrance, alcohol, talc, sulfates, or or parabens. So one thing I find completely unique about this Hourglass Veil Primer that I've never seen in another primer, and one reason why I have loved it as long as I have, is that it has this ability to repel water. I don't know what they did to it to make it that way. I just know that it works. So I live in a very hot and humid climate here in New Orleans. Uh, you can sweat walking to and from your car the majority of the year. I've been in some situations where my makeup would have melted away. It would have looked terrible if I had not worn this primer underneath my foundation. It has saved my makeup so many times. So that's just one reason why I have loved Veil Primer as long as I have. You can see the difference in obviously the finish of these when I apply them to the skin. I mean, the Vanish is completely translucent. It looks very lotion-y, whereas the Veil is milky. It, you know, massages in and kind of disappears. When they dried down, I felt like the Vanish 
had a normal skin finish to it. You could really just see, just like they said, the multi-dimensional look of my skin, whereas the veil just looked kind of mattified, which is kind of opposite of what you would think when the vanish claims to be mattifying and the veil doesn't. I wanted to choose a foundation to where you would hopefully be able to see the difference in the two sides. So I deliberately chose a medium coverage glowy foundation that I don't normally love on my pores when I'm not wearing a primer underneath it and that doesn't typically last a long time on my t-zone if I don't have a primer underneath. It's actually one that will be in an upcoming foundation roundup where I review a bunch of new foundation releases. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe because that's going to be coming out very soon. And I do have some thoughts on some new foundation releases. I didn't notice much difference after I applied my foundation, even after my makeup was fully applied. Now, I don't know if you see what I see. Let me know in the comments. But midday in natural light, I felt like the vanish side looked just a tad bit smoother. I mean, I don't love this foundation on my pores. I feel like my pores just looked okay. K on both sides, but I felt like it looked a little bit better on this side. Do you agree? Do you not agree? What you're seeing at the end of the day is consistent with what's happened as I've tested this out all along. First of all, this was an 11 and a half hour day. So my foundation, this particular foundation would not have looked this good at the end of this particular day without these primers underneath. So I think they both perform really well on this long day with this foundation. As the day goes on, that is where the differences start to appear more for me. And I feel like you can definitely see that there is more glow, more shine on the left side of my face, your right side, and that is the veil side. In person, it was a little more glow than I was comfortable with, but also not atypical for me wearing a glowy type of foundation. On the vanish side, I felt like it looked just more like a natural finish, although both sides, again, looked, you know, fairly good for this long day with this foundation. Okay, so you've seen all that, and you may still be confused about which primer you should go with for your skin type, for what you want. First of all, if you have dry skin, Hourglass has a number 28 primer that is fantastic. I have a makeup artist friend who is amazing and she swears by it for her dry skin clients. A lot of you swear by it. So don't sleep on that if you haven't tried that. It's not ideal for my personal skin type, which is combination. I get shine and oil breakthrough in my T-zone, whereas I'm fairly normal around the perimeter, but I can get some dry areas. There are also a lot of dry skin people who do really well with the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. Primer. I think this is a primer that can cross over into various skin types all the way from oily to dry. For me personally, even when I do have dry flaky areas, this doesn't exacerbate those. Both of these primers are going to do all of those wonderful things that they had in common at the very beginning. If you have Hourglass Veil already and you love its ability to be water repellent to help you in heat and humidity if you get a little sweaty, if you love the way it evens out your redness, your rosacea, and if you love the way it doesn't change the finish of the type of foundation you're wearing, stick with it. If that's what you're looking for, then this is the primer you should go for. If you have oily to combination, even normal skin, and you're again wanting all of those great things that we said earlier, but you're wanting something that will help control that shine you get in your T-zone or all over your face, you're wanting a mattifying primer that doesn't look or feel like a mattifying primer, and maybe that's what you think thought you were going to get from Mineral Veil, but it doesn't quite control that shine the way you wanted it to. This gives you kind of everything but that. I would try this out. I really have been enjoying this, and I find that that is one key difference that I have gotten when I've tested these two out, is that I can wear these with 
the same foundation and as the day goes on, the finish will change. It will stay a nice soft matte with the Vanish Airbrush Primer, whereas my natural glow will come through with the Veil Primer. And there's nothing wrong with that. My makeup has always looked good. It's just a, a slightly different product. As someone who was thoroughly confused before trying these out, if I needed both, if I only needed one or the other, I'm really glad that I put these to the test. I feel like personally, I do have a place for both. I love having a primer that evens redness and that helps me when I have really hot, sweaty days, but I love having a really good mattifying primer that doesn't give me that super matte look and that works well with whatever foundation I use it with. I don't know if this video muddied the waters for you or helped clear things up. I hope it helped you in some way. If it did, if you enjoyed it, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up so it could help more people. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.